I'm Avian J, and this is how to take care of a betta fish, a guide for beginners. Everything that you would need to know from purchasing a betta at the fish store to getting it home and setting up a proper environment for it. So the first thing that I want to talk about that I think when people talk about bettas and setting up betta aquariums, they often overlook this, and I think it's very important. When you talk about keeping an animal in captivity, you should try to keep it in the most similar environment possible to how it would live in the wild. Or at the very least, you should take into account the conditions that it would live in in the wild into making it happy in captivity. So. Here's some of my experience with wild betta fish. I've actually been to Malaysia and I've caught a dozen species of wild betta fish in the wild from various habitats and observed what they're like and learned a lot about how they live in those environments. So the first thing is they spend about half their years in puddles and half the year in larger systems. Tropical places where betta fish live, like Malaysia, have wet seasons and dry seasons. When there's a ton of rain, everything is sort of connected and they're living in this gigantic ecosystem, bigger than any tank you could ever imagine. But when it's dry season, they can live in tiny puddles and sometimes little drops of water this big under leaves which is important and we'll talk about it when we're talking about setting up the tank. Another thing is that every ecosystem that I found a betta fish in was highly vegetated, meaning there are a lot of plants. These guys really like to hide and they really like having plants to do that in. They're also highly territorial. This shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who knows anything about betta fish, but the males will chase out any other fish that comes across, sometimes even non-fish and it's warm year round in these places. And there's lots of rain and evaporation. Because it's very warm, a lot of water tends to evaporate from these areas, and then it tends to rain a lot, especially during rainy season, meaning that the water that the betta fish are living in gets cycled a lot. So when we convert those things into aquariums, the first thing is that highly vegetated in the wild should be replicated in an aquarium, okay? I don't want to knock on people who do fake, you know, Squidward house decorations because it is good to have a place for your betta to hide. However, real plants are like 10 times, I might even say 100 times better than fake plants or fake decorations. Rocks are one thing, they're not really in the ecosystems that betta live in the wild, but it's not a huge deal. The more thick plant life that you can have have going in your tank, the happier your betta is going to feel controlling that territory, weaving in and out between the vegetation. Another thing is they're highly territorial, so you should usually have a betta, especially if it's a male, alone in the tank. There are some proven combos. For whatever reason, there are some other aquarium fish that you can put them with that they don't seem to have a direct conflict with, and if you know of that and can make that work, that's one thing. Another thing is that it's warm year round in the wild, okay? So unless you live in the tropics, room temperature is too cold for a betta fish. You're going to need a heater. You should get a heater and heat it up to about, I don't know, 75 to 78. You can look at the exact specifications on a betta fish care sheet. I link some of the good ones at the end of this presentation. But the most important thing is that a heater is pretty important. If they're living in a cold tank, they're gonna be lethargic. They're not gonna be moving as fast, processing as fast, living basically as much at all. And the last thing is that there's lots of rain and evaporation in their native ecosystem, like I mentioned. So what that means in an aquarium is that you should do water changes frequently. You need the simulation of rain coming in and water evaporating out into the ecosystem to truly match the environment that these betta fish are native to. Let's talk about tank size. I put this one on a second slide because this is quite the debate when it comes to betta fish. When it comes to goldfish, which are another commonly mistaken care of fish, tank size is very relevant. With betta fish, I would make the argument from the knowledge that I have that tank size is not highly important. There's not really a correct tank size. They can be comfortable in very cramped ecosystems, and like I said, I've literally found them in the wild under some leaves that was like damp at best. There was no puddle of water, okay? Provided though that they have their needs met, and meeting their needs in a really small bowl or a one gallon tank is really hard, okay? 
think about this. This is a pretty good design. You've got some thick vegetation that the betta fish can feel comfortable living in. But how are you going to keep this heated? How are you going to manage the amount of food in here? How are you going to meet all of the needs, you know, do water changes? How are you going to meet the needs that I had mentioned previously in a bowl like this? So theoretically, it's not the tank size that is the problem, it's the difficulty of taking care of a fish in that tank. And so I recommend at minimum a five gallon for a betta fish. You'll be happier, it'll look prettier, they'll be happier, it'll be much easier to take care of them the way that you want to. You can make something like a bowl work, but fitting everything in here and having the care be good is really difficult. Another important note, betta fish jump. They will jump between puddles in the wild during dry season. So if there's a puddle here and a puddle here, and they run out of food in their puddle, or the water quality is really bad, you know, something leached into the water, they'll jump from one puddle to another. So in an aquarium, this can often be an indication that they're looking for food, or more commonly, that your water quality is bad. Nonetheless, something can happen overnight, and you don't want your fish to jump out of the tank, land on the floor, and dry up before you ever find them. So put a lid on your tank, okay? Don't overfeed. These fish are not good at dealing with overfeeding, and that's true of most aquarium fish, but betta fish in particular are very sensitive to that. Feed them little bits at first. See that they're still going for all the food. Ideally, if it's a sinking type food, they should be hitting it before it ever hits the ground. If they're going to scrounge for it later, you're feeding too much. They should be getting it off of the surface or as it's floating down. Last thing is to be aware of warning signs. Things like dropsy or lethargy, that is the scales sort of pine coning up, lethargy being they're not moving around as much or as fast or they're kind of swimming weird. Pay attention to those things because those are solvable problems as they come up if you pay attention. So, water changes, as I mentioned earlier. They are one of the most important parts of keeping a happy betta fish. Use an aquarium vacuum, all right? You remove about a fourth of the tank's water, you know, 20 to 30%, particularly focusing on detritus buildup. So what'll happen a lot in tanks, especially still tanks, because if you notice, I haven't mentioned that a filter's required. Filters help, but the water does not need to be moving. Betta fish are very used to still water, okay? and detritus will build up in still water tanks. That is like the little dirt layer that can come from overfeeding, it come from plants decaying. It'll happen in almost any tank, okay? So when you're vacuuming, focus on getting that out of there. It's just a good idea to have less stuff decaying in the water. Then refill the tank with treated water and do it slowly so you don't shock the fish. You don't wanna to put too much water that they're not used to because the fish can go into shock. Remember, you're simulating evaporation and rain. So these things should be done somewhat slowly. When it comes to feeding, there are a lot of options, but mainly you want protein-rich food because bettas are mostly carnivorous in the wild. They're eating little insects, little bugs in the water. So at a pet store, typically what I say is, and this is one of the few times that this is true when it comes to buying something, quality does tend to equal price. The more expensive protein-based foods do tend to be a higher quality than the less expensive ones. If you pay for some really cheap shrimp pellets, you're gonna get really low nutritional value. My personal recommendations and my favorite fish food for almost all fish are bloodworms. They come in these frozen little cubes, as you can see here. You keep them in your freezer, you just drop a cube in at feeding time, and it comes apart into a bunch of bloodworms in the water. It's very entertaining for you to watch as the fish attack it. It spreads out everywhere. The fish get a little stimulation out of trying to hunt it as the worms through the, move through the water. It looks more like a natural prey. I think shrimp pellets are also good if you get some decent quality ones. And finally, here's the stuff that I can't word better. These are care sheets for any of the information that I did not provide for you here. Uh, you'll notice that I didn't include, you know, Petco or PetSmart or any other fish store, and that's because I want to make an important point to you, and that is that the fish store employees are not your friends. The fish store owner is not your friend. Their goal is to sell you a product. Their goal is to profit, and it can be hard to profit in a fish store, which means misleading a lot of people. Now, I'm not to say that every fish store employee is a bad person and is trying to mislead you as the consumer. There are exceptions, though I, in my experience, they're rare. But don't walk into a fish store expecting to get educated, expecting an employee to explain everything to you and give you all the relevant information that you need. You are responsible for doing research. 
just by watching this, you probably care about the fish. You probably want to do proper research, and that is a great step in the right direction. I recommend looking at either of these links. Uh, I've looked through some of the stuff online, and there's a lot of misinformation about betta fish, but this are probably the most accurate and good care sheets that I could find online. So if you ever have a question, read through those. If you wanna know anything else, you can ask in the comments here. I highly recommend not asking Google because there are a lot of articles that will justify really poor conditions. I hope you do well with your new betta fish and I hope you enjoyed.